Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to properly set up player input, assuming that you have like the typical, you've got a player in the scene, you press uh, WASD to move them around. Now, I'm not on a, <laughs> this isn't going to be about how to actually, you know, move the character by, you know, using transform.translate or character controller.move. This is more about how to actually handle player input. So in the video, I'll use it for moving, but this covers like moving, jumping, opening your inventory, like any input you need in the game, this is how it's going to work. Um, there's reasons why I'm going to do it this way. Um, this is just good practice because with component-based design, uh, the goal or the purpose of it is to split up logic across different scripts rather than having um, tightly knitted code, I guess, as you would say. So rather than having a player script that handles its movement and its health and the jumping and input and everything, you have different scripts for each thing. Now you could go as far as having like one script for every little thing. You might, you can overdo it, but um, as a whole, it's good to split it up into as many as is feasibly possible. Um, feasibly obviously meaning like um, reasonably possible. So for the player, you'll need input, movement, uh, like health, and then whatever else you need in your game, depending on what kind of game it is, but they're like the free kind of standard ones, I guess. Any more than that isn't really necessary. Like you don't have to have a different one for movement and jumping because jumping is part of movement, for example, but it's up to you. Anyway, so before we get into the video, I want to thank my patrons. Thanks to Michael, Norwegian Viking, Paul Robinson, and Phil Bourne for their uh, donations on Patreon this month. If anyone else would, I, uh, would like to or is able to help out, then links in the description below. But apart from that, let's get into it. So. Um, I have two scripts like I was on about, player input and player movement, they're empty, and we have a floor and a player, so I'm going to, um, just for the sake of it, give the uh, player a rigid body, and then the floor should have a collider, yeah, okay. So if we press play, obviously nothing's going to happen, it should just be, even though it's got a rigid body, it shouldn't fall. Okay, good. So this, this player, we're going to attach a player movement script to it. So um, as a standard thing, you might have, for example, um, a variable that can be accessed for the speed, so I don't know, private float speed, and in the, uh, let me just control K, control D to clean that up, okay, so in the update function, you might take in input, so you might say uh, vector2 is equal to, no, vector2 movement is equal to a new vector2, and then the x would be input dot get axis um, horizontal I have to say it out loud like that otherwise I forget I'd spell it input dot get axis vertical so we store the x and y of our movement and then we can just say transform dot we'll use translate for this transform dot translate and that takes in a vector free so we could say, well actually just no, it can also just take in the x and y separately. Yep, okay, so we'll just say movement.x, comma zero, comma movement.y, if I remember correctly. We can tweak that if it's not right. But um, the point is you take in your input and then you just move it dependent on the input. Now obviously there's things we could do with that, like we could normalize the input because currently the uh, player will move faster if they are going at an angle. But obviously, oh no. I really should, um, well first of all I need to times, you know I'll do it quickly, so we'll say movement.normalize and then um, movement times equals speed. I mean there's different ways of writing this, but the point is we normalize it, which means that uh, if we're going forwards and to the right we don't go faster than if we're going just forwards or just right. Uh, and this should take in our speed and, you know, technically um, we should times by time dot delta time because if we are, if we got a better frame rate we'll end up moving faster so we don't want that. Okay, with all that set up now we can obviously move around if I set the speed uh, to 5 for example, there we are, a bit better. So right, left, forwards, down. It's got a rigid body, so it takes a little bit, it like slides for a bit and then it stops. Um, but the point is I can move in all directions. I could fall off the end if I wanted to. That's great, but the problem is when we take an input here and then maybe we need something else which knows the player's input and that would have to access our player movement script. 
But then what if something else on there needs a bit of different input, like it might need to know whether we've pressed the inventory button. And that's going to be on another script, so you have to get access to that. So it's always good to centralize things in their own places. So for example, all of the input should be in one place. So if this script needs input, we just get reference to the player input. And if that script, like th these are all just scripts that don't exist, but I'm saying hypothetically, if we had multiple scripts that needed to know the player's input, they wouldn't have to go for different like little scripts. They just go for the player input script and that has it all there. That's the whole point. Player movement should just be doing the moving. We should read the input from the input script, which handles that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to end up putting it in here and reading it. And this script is just going to be um, cal like taking in it, all the input the player needs and storing it, then anything else can reference it. Now, this class, we could make it a static instance because there's only going to be one player input, at least in a single player game. And when we're going to always be talking about single player games, never multiplayer in this because I'm not experienced in multiplayer games. But... Um, what we need to do is we need to have variables for like the player's movement and jumping input and stuff that we can read from here. So first of all, let's say in this player script, we're not gonna make it static for this video. What we'll do is because it's on the same object as our player movement, we'll just say um, we want to store a private reference to player input and we'll just call it player input. Uh, and we're gonna set it on a wake to be uh, equal to get component player input because it's gonna be on us. And one nice trick to make sure that um, it will always exist is above the class, you can write in square brackets, um, require component type of, whoops, type of, and then, there you go. And then you pass in the like, class type that you need to have on an object with player movement, so player input. So now, if we tried either removing um, player input with player movement on, it wouldn't let you. Let me do another bracket. Or if we added player movement and that wasn't already on it, it would add player input for us because it needs to be on it for it to work. So that's quite nice to, you know, force yourself to have it on and not forget. And then once we got reference to it, we, well, we can obviously call the stuff in it. So we need some public variables. But the one problem with public variables, if I had a public float, um, like movement, right? Um, movement input. The problem with having this and then setting it, so uh, in the update function, just setting the um, movement input to this, so let's just copy that. If we set the movement input equal to this, there's some things which will work fine. I mean, it, as a whole, it will work fine uh, if I do the brackets right. Um, wait, yeah, it's a vector two. I'm in about. Ooh, uh, vector two, not vector two integer. So I can reference that, right? I can say, um, let's store it in here. We're going to reference it. So we'll vector two movement is equal to player input dot uh, movement input. So we're referencing this float in here, which you know this script handles that. Uh, the problem is, because it's a just a public variable, we can set it in here, which would mess it up for everything else reading it, um, if we were accidentally setting it. So just for a safety thing, what we can do is, and it's also just more professional, is to write get colon private set colon. And people have preferences where they put the colons, because you can put one at the end. Wait, never mind, you can't. I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> screw it. it was something else where you can do that, but yeah, just do it the syntax. So what that means is quite... Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much in English as it is anyway. We can get this externally. Like basically, we can get it from anywhere, but we can only set it privately, so in here. So like, it's a variable we can access, you know, uh, you can see the spanner movement input. But if I um, said, for example, player input dot movement input is equal to a new vector to uh, zero comma one, it's gonna say, um, it's inaccessible basically because you're not allowed to change it. So that protects you from accidentally changing it. Now I know most people will be like, well, I'm not going to change it anyway, but it's just safer to do it and there's no reason not to. And then if you do accidentally do it, it's going to warn you and not let you compile. So that saves you. Um, and we want to do this for every kind of input. So you might be like, hmm, my player can move, but now I need him to jump. So you'll be like, uh, public bool uh, jump input. And you can say get private set. And all you want to do, just add it here above, below, it doesn't matter. Just say jump input is equal to um, 
input dot get key down. Make sure it's get key down for jumps. Uh, key code, mm, key code dot space. And this is the script where you'd handle uh, custom key bindings. Now, I've not really had experience of it, but in the new upcoming version of Unity, I can't remember which one it is, but the new beta version at this time of making this video has a new input system, which I think has key bindings in it that you can redo. Currently, you have to code your own like solution for doing that, whether you store the key bindings in a scriptable object and read that, or dictionary somewhere. There's different ways to handle it, basically. Um, for now, for the sake of this tutorial, keep it simple. Just say space boss jump no matter what. Um, and now, uh, in the update, maybe I also, so I'll, what I can do is, I can say all of this code here um, is movement code, right? So, extract method, move, and then I can say jump. And to be honest, I can just put those together and go down here and say private void jump. And when we jump, what should we do? We can say, um, let, let's store the rigid body. Rigid body. Rigid body. And just say, well, actually, no, we can, because we're on the object, we can just say, um, rigid body dot add force. Uh, no, apparently you can't. Yeah, okay. Apparently that's deprecated, but yeah. <laughs> Private rigid body RB, and we'll just say RB is equal to get component rigid body. And just for the sake of it, if your player is always going to have a rigid body, you can just add it on here. So to say, um, require component type of rigid body. Boom. And you might just say if they jump, then um, I will fix this in a second. I, I understand that that's wrong. <laughs> Well, no, so sorry, movement's gonna get called every frame, but jump will only get called if we've jumped, or we could still handle line here. So we can say, if player input dot uh, jump input, which is a, a Boolean. So if the we press jump, then we can say rb dot add force, um, vector three dot up, so, so it's gonna be upwards, times by, I don't know, jump force as an impulse, that's just the way of adding force. And then at the top, we'll say, we also want to have a float for jump force. So currently this script only handles the movement parts and it reads the input from player input. It reads the input from player input, as you see. Um, and player input is just for handling the taking of input. And then anything that needs to know about the player's input can access that. So if you've got like, um, I don't know, a, an inventory system. If you want to check whether the players press inventory, you can um, either do it there or I get, it makes more sense to do it on the play. You could have uh, inventory input and then just put what letter that is that opens the inventory. But let's say um, what speed's five, jump force is five, why not? And now, even though these two scripts are. Wait, for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, the input script has gone. Wait, player input. Oh, it's there, okay. I don't know why it had gone. Um, for a space bar and we jump. So there we go, that's pretty much it. So this system can be expanded upon as much as you need. So whenever you need, think, oh, the player needs some more input, just add it to the input script and you can reference it from anywhere rather than like shoving it in the wrong scripts. Obviously having, um, yeah, I don't know why that messed that up when I put that there, it got rid of it, but hey, it's fine. So we handle moving, jumping in here, and that's it. Keep it for what it is. So when you have a bug with your jumping, you know, hmm, it must be in the player movement script because that's where jumping is. Rather than thinking, okay, it's in the player script and then scrolling down through hundreds of lines of code past all the health stuff into the moving stuff and just, it just doesn't make sense. It's much better to have stuff split up, as I keep emphasizing, but if you're you know, planning on making games or you are making games, then just please take that one piece of advice, if anything. Just split your stuff up into different components. Like, don't write a script. Uh, if your game has like loads of different projectiles that do cool and special and different things, don't write like a script for every single one of those projectiles. Just write um, generic scripts that you can attach multiple different small ones of onto that object. So 
if you have a, an arrow that flies and sticks into things and deal damage, you will want to write a script that um, handles just an object sticking into an object it collides with, and then you'll write a script for dealing damage on like collision. You'll write a script for um, destroying the arrow after, I don't know, 10 seconds of being stuck or whatever you want. Just write different scripts, and then you come to make a new projectile that sticks, and you just drag the old things on and set it up, and you don't need to... You know, just to put it on the prefab, have some variables you can change, but you don't need to rewrite an entire script where most of it's copy and pasting. It's even better to do that than inheritance. You don't need to inherit um, from like a base class projectile, just write the different projectile scripts separately. So I hope watching this video you've learned something. If you have, then obviously leave a like and subscribe, it'd mean a lot. Um, if you haven't learned anything, then I'll leave. No, no, I'm joking. Just <laughs> do what you do, whatever you want. Um, if you haven't already, then go check out our Discord server and link below. Uh, obviously, uh, if anyone else is able to help support the channel, then the links in the description below. Um, that was the player input script missing, but I fixed it anyway. So yeah. Uh, apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.